Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your interest in this presentation on branch endovascular repair in a type 4 abdominal aneurysm using force technology. These are my disclosures. This case is about an 83-year-old male patient who had a two-graph repair 20 years ago and has developed proximal and distal progression of disease. He has some significant comorbidities. The plan of the procedure is to use a four-branched short torque abdominal endograft in order to connect the four major torque abdominal vessels and include an autobiotic component. So a pretty standard branched endovascular repair in a patient with some tortuous anatomy. Here you can see the setup of the force technology. We use a force wire and catheter that are registered shortly after the vessel navigator registration uh, of the volume has happened. Here you see how the catheter and the wire are introduced for the registration. And with a few clicks in two, um, in, in two projections, the system um, recognizes the false materials and you can see the wire in yellow and the catheter in blue and also the length of both devices are adjusted here. First, the endograft is fluorid to see all the branches, then it's introduced through the transfemoral axis in a standard fashion. For the deployment, we use the vessel navigator and the orifice markers with the rings are quite helpful. The biotic component as well is uh, deployed here, as you can see using the marker for the hypogastric artery on the right side uh, as a, uh, as a for the length and the position of the deployment. Then we introduce a steerable sheath that is stabilized by a uh, through and through wire, which you see here fixated with the clamps. That's our way how to secure a stable access when using transfemoral access in branch repair. And the force uh, wire and catheter, as you will see in a minute, tolerate this very significant bend of the steel sheath quite well. Here, the first target vessel is accessed using the force wire. You see how helpful the biplanar visualization and the 3D animation is as we instantly understand whether our devices point towards the, the ventral or the dorsal aspect and it didn't take long to get this branch. Uh, this is already the uh, final part of the celiac artery, and you see how well the 3D visualization helps in understanding the 3D anatomy of the patient. Um, the uh, Rosen wire here is put into place, and again, some parts of the procedure, like the bridging stain graft deployment that you see here with the balloon expandable, covered stand is not done with force as this requires fluoroscopy in order to visualize the materials. This is the uh, selective angiography of the uh, celiac artery. Again, we use both catheter and wire to catheterize the left renal, but we notice that the catheter does not actually have the required shape. So here you can see that we can use the force wire also with the, with the standard catheter uh, of choice. Um, this already depicts the right renal artery that is uh, accessed using the force uh, wire and after deployment of the bridging stent and uh, dilatation using standard PTA balloon, um, the selective angiography shows a good result for this target vessel. Ballooning is still an important step of these procedures, and the final angiography shows unimpeded flow to all the target vessels and not more than some type 2 endoleak in this procedure. This patient was treated with a relatively short fluoroscopy time and dose area product, as you can see. But what is most important is that the dose, the fluoroscopy part, is really a minor part of the of the uh, dose area product, while it's usually half of it when using a standard fluoroscopy without force. The patient recovered 
uh, fast and was discharged on the sixth post-operative day. Summarizing, I'd like to say that FOSS technology and the laser light guided uh, visualization helps uh, in BIVA cases and gives us low radiation dose and fluoro time, it gives us a superior multiplanar 3D visualization, which enhances the understanding of the target vessel anatomy. And FORS technology is a new and very precise low radiation tool for complex endovascular aortic repair. Thank you very much for your attention. Wonderful, Tilo. Now, moderators, please give preference to any audience questions. Audience, um, I want you to engage and really learn about this because I don't think there'll be many advances like this every year. Uh, very, very important that you see uh, the details of this, ask questions and see the next half an hour, see the future of this subject. Moderators, what are your questions? Tilo, uh, thank you so much for this uh, great presentation. Um, I like that you also showed the preparation of the system before you can use it. Um, and regarding, uh, regarding that, what do you think? Does, does it have a long learning curve or is it intuitive and, and easier to use as when you start using it? Well, it, it is very intuitive, uh, both the registration process as it's a, an, an easy guided process where you have to do a number of clicks to um, register those devices. And to be honest, of course, we have to sometimes re-register as we do with the CT fusion technology as well, whether, when, there is a little, uh, when there is a little gap. Um, the wires and catheters work very similar to what we are used to. Um, it is uh, a difference because there's a tether at the end of the catheter and the wire that connects it to a, to a system in order to uh, get the laser light to the, to the hardware of the, of the FOSS system. Hello, we have a question from uh, Dr. Stoner, who's the Chief of Vascular Surgery at the University of Rochester. Are there any fatigue issues with the fiber optic cable? In other words, how long will it last? Does it last an entire case? Um, in the vast majority of cases where we use it, it lasted the whole case. Um, in the beginning, we had some, um, some learning curve in understanding uh, exactly um, how well the uh, wire tolerates uh, pressure, bending, et cetera. You know, we use uh, Taruma wire sometimes really forceful in order to dissect also uh, uh, or to, uh, uh, to, to, to press us uh, in between structures. There's some limitation to it, uh, but the system instantaneously indicates when you put too much pressure on the system, which is another advantage of the force system. It is an indication also how much load is on the, on the wire. So it may even warn you before you dissect the vessel or before you damage the structure. Well, I'm going to give you a chance to, to get ready to chair the next session, Tilo, uh, and say uh, to both you in terms of this wonderful video and Tom, that you've, you've I think we've shown the audience the future uh, in, in both these techniques. 